Hey, Hartman, come out. Come on, don't be mad. I can't believe you're acting this childish. Why don't you just come out here? We can talk. You know, Miss Lottie, I don't know exactly what it is you're still doing in my bedroom, but I'm going to be taking off this robe and going to bed. And I certainly wouldn't want you to think that because I have no clothes on, I might be about to try something. I don't think that. You don't think that? Oh, I forgot. You wouldn't think that a person taking his clothes off is necessarily a precursor to making love any more than jumping in my bathtub and sucking my ear meant that you liked me. <laughs> I forget, you go by different clues than the rest of us. That's why when you were in my bed just now, fully clothed, but nevertheless with your arms and legs wrapped around me, that was, for you, a logical time to jump up and say, gee, I really need to brush my teeth and take this makeup off. I said I was sorry. The time to say, I'm sorry, I'm not interested, is before you get into a person's bathtub or bed. I mean... I'm a guy who can take no for an answer. I understand no. I've been working with no now for a number of years. And no one ever has had to slap my face twice. But you see, once we get past the bed and bath stage, then it's a little hard for me personally to disengage. I know that you do not suffer from that problem. You could obviously stop right in the middle of the 150 positions of the Kama Sutra and bowl a perfect 300 game. But I, unfortunately, do not have that skill. Didn't that shower help? Not really. <laughs> Apparently, after a while, a cold shower loses its effectiveness. But I need an aspirin. I'm sorry. I think you're just being a little overdramatic. I don't see what the problem is here. We admitted our feelings for one another. We had a wonderful night out on the town. Excuse me. It was not a night out on the town. I took you to one restaurant where I paid to keep an orchestra playing all night. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll pay you back. You think because you spring for an orchestra to stay late and they play a couple of romantic tunes that that entitles you to some kind of sexual favors? Yes, I do. <laughs> Especially if it's more than five pieces. <laughs> I'm sure those boys certainly would not have given up a night's sleep huffing and puffing their hearts out if they had known that nothing was going to come of it. <laughs> I don't believe this. Now you want me to feel guilty about the band. I don't care what you feel, but I would appreciate you not smoking at 6 o'clock in the morning. If we had made love, you wouldn't mind if I smoked, would you? You know, Miss Lottie, this may explain why you seem to be so confused. You remember those old movies when people would kiss and they'd cut to horses running across a field and then when we come back to the couple, they'd be smoking a cigarette? Evidently, you didn't get that that couple was actually doing something off camera. I guess you just thought they were lying there thinking about horses. Oh, that's very funny. You lecturing me on my lack of worldliness. For your information, I have seen movies where the people ran through fields and the horses smoked cigarettes. So what's your point? My point is, I find it very amusing you would try to impugn my level of sophistication just to shore up your own sense of sexual insecurity. Hey, after a week with you, I'm trying to shore up anything I can. Yes, hello? Uh, no, it's, it's okay, Deandra, I'm up. What is it? Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight. You're calling me at 6 o'clock in the morning to tell me that somebody's coming over here today to remove my bathtub because you and Ruth want it in your bathroom? I know you designed it, but uh, you should have asked for it during the divorce. Well, I don't really care if Ruth likes to take a bath. As a matter of fact, I don't really care if Ruth likes to get in a frog suit and explore the city sewers. You're not getting the top. She wants your bathtub? I don't really want to talk about it, but as far as I'm concerned, you and my ex-wife have one thing in common. You're both fruitcakes. Fine. You know, I've tried to be nice about this. I have tried to explain to you that I haven't been involved with anyone in a long, long time. And whenever I was involved, it never worked out. My life is in a shambles. I'm enormously attracted to you, but I'm sorry. I just don't think I'm ready for this. Fine. Then may I make just one request? Stop sticking your tongue down my throat. Really, you are so vulgar. Obviously, people don't know it because you have this John Boy Walton facade. Oh, oh man. What? What's the matter? What? I don't know. Nothing. I, don't, I just don't feel very good. I got the chills. I'm sort of dizzy. Okay, let me help you. Let me feel you for it. Ah. Oh, my gosh. You're burning up. You have a fever. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm putting you to bed right now. Oh. Excuse me, Miss Lottie, but have you and my wife completely lost your minds? Senator Smithers can't say stuff like, 
the Republican convention was nothing but a high-tech lynching of uppity women. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but you ladies seem to have lost all objectivity. You know, if you don't mind me saying so, Billy Bob, you know, by the way, I've been meaning to ask you, is that really your name? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, I thought it was like, you know, a joke. No. <laughs> anyway, it seems to me that you and Mr. Hartman are restricting the senator with your own political prejudices. Look, Billy, let, let's just cut to the chase here, okay? The bottom line is, Georgie and I do not agree with you and John about how the senator should be playing this family values thing, and we're going to fight you on this every step of the way. What the hell does that mean? What do you mean? I mean, that's a pretty wide spectrum. Are you going to stop speaking to us, or are you going to have us killed? I don't know. We need to have a meeting. You know, Mavis, you act like this every time your parents visit from New York City. You get real uppity. Well, I don't think I need to be here for this. Oh, Senator. Hi. We're just working on your speech for tomorrow. Oh, never mind that. There are bigger problems. By the way, does anyone know why Miss Starr is selling women's underwear in the lobby? Well, actually, sir, I think she's having a lingerie party. You know, she's got that mail-order catalog business, and those are some of her samples. Oh, thank you, Miss Davis. I hesitated to ask because you don't know what trends are in anymore. For all I know, it's perfectly appropriate for people now to be selling their underwear at work. <laughs> I just need someone to keep me apprised of these things. Uh, sir, you mentioned something about a bigger problem. Well, yes, the bigger problem is that Mrs. Smithers and I had a real bad falling out. Well, as you know, she is a lot younger than me, and she does not want me to run for the Senate in 94 because she would like to run for my seat. What is this? It's your speech for the VFW. It's on family values. Oh, values, schmalues. I'm tired of talking about all that Hollywood cultural elite stuff. I think there are a lot of very fine people in Hollywood. I always enjoy Jack Benny and Jackie Gleason. And I'll tell you, that fella that played Mannix, now he had a real good program. <laughs> you ever see that program, Miss Lottie? No, I didn't see No, that. I'll bet you didn't, because you're out breaking hearts. You and Miss Davis both. Am I right, Billy Bob? Probably so. Hell, you know it's so. These are good-looking women. And frankly, there are a lot of dogs on the hill this year. <laughs> I know I shouldn't say that. They can't help it, but it's true. Senator, is there any way I can help you with Mrs. Smithers? As a matter of fact, there is. Now that I've been kicked out of my house, I can't go to a hotel because they get in the papers. I'm looking for a place to stay. Well, we'd be happy to have you stay with us. <laughs> Except Mavis's parents are visiting from New York City. How about Mr. Houghton? Well, he's not feeling well. Oh, I know. Well, would you mind if I bunked over a few nights until Mrs. Smithers came to her senses? Well, I guess not. Uh, Miss Lula's gonna go visit her sister, so I guess you can sleep in the guest room. Who's Miss Lula? Oh, my nanny. Mr. Hartman lives with her? That's right. Shouldn't your nanny live with you? Well, she does. It's a long story, Senator. What is it, Miss Starr? <laughs> oh, oh, I, I didn't want to disturb Mr. Hartman at home, so I wondered if Miss Lottie could tell him that Deandra and Ruth called. They have gotten a court order to have his bathtub removed today. <laughs> Thank you, I'll tell him. My goodness, Mr. Hartman lives a much fuller life than I ever imagined. <laughs> he seems so quiet here at work. Oh, and Senator, I'll be picking up your heart medicine after five today, but I can't bring it by till later on tonight. I'm having permanent eyeliner tattooed on my eyelids. Wish me luck. All right, good luck on having permanent eyeliner tattooed on your eyelids. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Miss Starr. Please bring the medicine to Mr. Hartman's house. Oh, my goodness. Does he have a heart condition, too? <laughs> no. I'll be working over there later on. If Miss Lottie is sure that it won't disturb anybody. No, no, no. Mr. Hartman will be thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. <clears throat> I cannot believe you invited Senator Strobe Smithers to stay in my house. Anyway, where's he going to sleep? Well, he can sleep in the guest bedroom. I'll take the sofa. Well, evidently, you have failed to notice we no longer have a sofa. You're kidding. What happened? Deandra decided she needed it because it matches Ruth's wallpaper. <laughs> you know, Deandra's a decorator. She ordered us a new one. Oh, that was considerate. Yeah. They took part of the tub out today, too. I tried to stop them, but I was too weak. Plus, that Ruth is really big. <laughs> she looks like she could bench press a piano. What'd the doctor say? 
Oh, uh, he doesn't know. They took some blood. Blood? That sounds serious. Gee, don't get so excited. I guess you think if I kick off, you and your nanny will get this house. Don't be ridiculous. I don't even know you well. So what are you doing in my bedroom, riding my stair machine, wearing whatever that thing is you're wearing? Well, this is a sample from Miss Star. It's an exercise bodysuit. Rubber's supposed to make you sweat. Yeah, well, it's certainly making me sweat. <laughs> You know, Miss Lottie, even though I am ill and in a somewhat weakened condition, I still am a man. And especially after the conversation we just had this morning, I would think you could make an extra effort to stop tormenting me. You're kidding. You find this sexy? I think I look like Lloyd Bridges in Sea Hunt. You know, I don't think you think that. I think you know you look hotter than a pistol. What are you implying? I'm implying that you're trying to drive me insane. I saw the movie Gaslight. <laughs> You really do have a fever. You just lay back and relax, get some rest. Don't worry, I'm taking care of everything. I know. That's what worries me. Where are the boys? Uh, they're out in the patio with the senator. We're roasting marshmallows. Marshmallows? That's what they're having for dinner? Uh, no, silly. For dinner, we had Pop-Tarts. Would you like some more root beer, Senator? I certainly would. I don't know, and I had more fun. And you boys are fine boys. You're a tribute to your father, and you're fine Americans, too. What year are you in school? I'm in fifth grade, and he's in second. Well, that's fine. Miss Lottie, tomorrow remind me to get these boys a belt buckle with a capital on it. <laughs> Hell, get them, too. There's no point in them having to share. <laughs> you have one? No, but you know, I don't wear a belt very often. Did I tell you that all my clothes were lost when my dry cleaners burned down? Oh, I heard about that. A terrible tragedy. What's that saying? I cried when I had no shoes until I saw a man wearing nothing but shoes. What are you doing out of bed? Why are you down here? I just want to know what's going on. Hey, Dad, Sailor Smithers knows Neil Armstrong. He gave him a big piece of dirt from the moon. Oh, that's great, son. How you doing, Senator? I'm just Danny. What a family you got over there. Top of the line. Well, thank you. Why are you down here? Because I was worried where the Senator's going to sleep. I thought maybe you could take the lower bunk in the boys' room. Elliot, you can sleep with me. My bed's got a rubber sheet on it. I took it off. Good. I doubt whether I'll need it. Oh, you never know. Is it a hot mattress? No, it's really soft. And I keep some food and first aid supplies in a locker under my bed. That a boy. Always be prepared. Hey, Dad. Miss Lottie helped us put together a disaster preparedness kit. That's good. Miss Lottie should give those out wherever she goes. I'm sorry, but I can't sleep on a soft mattress. I hurt my back in World War II. Or maybe it was doing something else. I can't remember. But all I know is I heard it. Where are you staying, Miss Lottie? Oh, in the guest bedroom. Well, I guess I could stay with you. Although, it might not look right. Of course, we could always consent to be monitored. <laughs> Excuse me, can I see you out here for a moment? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, that's enough marshmallows and root beer. What is it? Well, I think it's obvious we don't have a couch. He can't sleep with me. He can't tolerate bunk beds, so I guess he'll just have to sleep with you. Are you crazy? I can't sleep with him. Who ever heard of sleeping with your boss? Gee, I seem to recall a different slant on that this morning. <laughs> Look, it's enough that I don't feel very well and I haven't slept in days. I'm not spending the night sleeping with him, and that's final. You better make sure and set that alarm, Mr. Hoffman, because I usually go to bed at 8.30 and I don't want to oversleep. Uh, what are we doing here, anyway, uh, at the moment? Uh, watching TV? <laughs> Yeah, just until I can get some sleep, Senator. Look at this. I got a hundred and two fever. Oh, hell, that's nothing. I knew people in World War II with malaria. They had fever up to 104, 105, 106. Thank you, thank you, Senator. I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, if you don't mind, Senator, I'm going to watch Murphy Brown. Murphy Brown? Is that that gal Dan Quayle was picking on? Yes, sir, it is. Oh, hell. A good-looking woman. Look at that. What the heck does he have against her? Well, Senator, she had a baby out of wedlock. Well, she's not real, is she? <laughs> no, sir, she's not. Well, what the hell's the problem? Does the president know she's not real? Yes, sir, I believe he does. Well, he should tell Quayle. 
What's going on? Georgie told me you were up here. Yeah, we're here, all right. What are you doing? Mavis and I had a big fight about politics, and uh, I told her that she and her entire family should go live with Mario Cuomo. <laughs> and she kicked me out. Oh. Billy Bob, I don't mean to be inhospitable, but are there any men left in this town who are getting to sleep in their own beds? And is my home the only shelter? Hell, I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. The senator's kicked out, and I'm kicked out, and I think it's time we start standing up to some of these women. You're exactly right. You people own half your homes, don't you? You can't just let women walk all over you. Anyhow, in the meantime, I was just going to crash here on your sofa. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> what happened? My ex-wife took it. Have you seen this Murphy Brown? Good-looking woman. But she's not real. Don't go away. Tonight's show will be right back. I don't know. I can't figure out if I like this Jay Leno yet or not. What do you think, John? I have no opinion. What happened to Jack Parr? <laughs> Senator, Jack Parr's been gone for about 30 years. Well... That must have been about the time I quit watching. Mrs. Smithers and I usually go to bed at 8.30. Oh, not for anything particular. She has this thing that zips up to here with fur all over it and ostrich feathers. Hell, you've got to have a machete to get to her. Well, we just came in to tell you boys goodnight. Are you serious? What are you guys still doing up? You were supposed to be in bed hours ago. Miss Lottie was just helping us with our homework. You know, you guys look so cute and snuggly in your jammies. I'll just leave on a hall light in case you get scared. Not bad. Good night. Hey, wait, wait. You better not kiss me. I'm probably contagious. Boy, there's some more good news. <laughs> hey, Dad. Yeah. How come Mr. Davis is spending the night here, too? I know. His wife kicked him out. <laughs> Very perceptive there, Ben. Don't ever get married, boys, or you'll end up like us. That's right. A woman will suck all the life out of you and leave you for dead on the side of the road. Anytime a girl comes near you, I want you guys to run for your lives. Ben, boys. Good night, tomboy. Good night. <sighs> you know, I hate to hurt anybody's feelings, but somebody's got some terrible breath. Well, that's probably me. I had a lot of root beer. Hey, Dad, there's somebody here to see you. Senator, I just came by to bring your heart medicine. Uh, oh. I, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting something. Oh, you're not. They were all just telling me and my brother how we need to stay away from women. <laughs> Sleep. I'm not sure, but I think the senator made a pass at me. <laughs> well, what about you? Why aren't you in bed? I couldn't sleep. No, that's not the total truth. I was thinking about you. Really? Well, if it's any consolation, I think about you all the time. Do you hate me? Yes, I hate you. Yeah, I hate you, too. Because the last thing I want to do is get involved again, and here I am involved. I am so attracted to you. I don't know how much longer I can fight it. I know. <sighs> I've never been this attracted to anybody. I feel like a sex maniac. I fantasize about you all the time. Really? What are we doing? Lots of things. <laughs> We're at a football game. Ice skating. White House reception. But the major theme is you're always naked. I want to kiss you so bad right now. But I'm afraid if I do and then we don't, you'll think I'm just leading you on. No, hey, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm a beaten man. I'm not looking for a home run anymore. I'll settle for crumbs, really. If nothing else, let me just smell your shoes. <laughs> Silly. I don't want to fight anymore. I just want to be close to you. I still might be contagious. I want every last one of your germs. Give them to me now. <laughs> Hello? 
Yes, this is he. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're kidding. There must be some mistake. Well, I don't care what the tests say. You better go back and run them again. This is a really bad time to call because I have absolutely no intention of being quarantined. <laughs>